Well, we have a rule to get our kids the present, but we're using PowerPoint as, um, as one of the steps to get there. And I included this slide down there because this week, I don't know if you realize, but this week was National Engineering Week. Wednesday was specifically Girls' Day. So we gave a challenge to our girls the week before, and we told them Wednesday is Girls' Day. We're going to have a conference in our cafeteria, um, and you can engineer a project and then come and present at our conference. And so the girls worked on it for about a week. Wednesday came, we sent the boys out to recess. Well, almost all the boys were boys today. And um, the girls came up, and they got to have their own conference. And this slide is a slide from our keynote. She was a fifth grader. And she talked about, she, I mean, it was girl power in her keynote address, the fifth grader. And these are some of the projects that we have worked on. We've made hot air balloons. You can see the windmills there. Um, we even have some girls, and this was one of the projects at our uh, engineering conference. Is, did you know that you can make your own lipstick out of crayons? Yeah, so I have these girls, they brought in this little stutter foam cup, and it's full of this purple liquid. And um, they said, we make our own lips, we make our own makeup. And they explained to everybody how they use crayons and vegetable oil, and they nuke it, and they can make any shape of lip gloss. So they, they brought me some lip gloss too. But I just thought it was so amazing that we have this fifth grader using PowerPoint too, to inspire and encourage others. But it's not just about that. I mean, it could be podcasting. Imagine if you had a once a week podcast where the kids do their own research and they share. I mean, you talk about a global audience. Common Core has done one thing, um, it's really brought that awareness to um, the global audience. It's no longer just for the teacher or maybe even just for the class, but it's sharing it with everyone. Um, so, the other one is viewing. All right, how many of you guys watch YouTube tutorials? Because I know that when I'm cooking, I'm trying a new recipe. Like, have you seen that YouTube tutorial on how to cut a watermelon? Like, just like on slice, 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 and you dump it out? That's so amazing. But when we watch it, we don't just watch it once. We go back. We watch it a few times. Where if I'm watching just this last summer, I was learning um, this way to um, shuck corn. Really easy way to shuck corn. And I had to watch it a couple times and rewind it and do it. And then, how do you do that? Okay. You know, but our kids are doing that too. <clears throat> but I know that in some schools, YouTube is blocked, and that's for good reason. But there's other options, okay? We have Vimeo, we have school tutors, but our school district uses Discovery Education because I know that Ohio is a park state, and I know that your students are taking part. Okay, and ask some of those questions, video-based questions. They have to watch that video and then answer questions. And it's not simply good enough, okay, my students know how to push that triangle that means play, but they have to listen to it to get context out of it. And maybe the first time they didn't get that content, go back, use that slider bar, rewind, listen to it again to get that idea. But they are not going to be content with watching tutorials for very long. I guarantee you they're going to start making their own. Another aspect, the last aspect of literacy is writing. Okay, so when I was going to school, we had to write a report every month and turn it into the teacher. He was the only one that got to read it. And maybe a month later, I did that. What's the fun in that? Okay, but our kids have so many more options. They have, they can blog. Um, they can do a weekly website. That is what our kids are really talking about in high school right now. There's comic creator. Oh my gosh. Let me see, the new term is graphic novel. They love those. Um, iBooks, it is so easy if your school is a math school, Apple. Um, iBooks, it is so easy to publish your own book. Um, QR codes, so my school is a little bit different, like I said, we're on a reservation and we have an interpretive trail. And you know, you go out one night, you go to a trail and you see a sign, Oak. <coughs> wow, I learned a lot. But imagine if there was a QR code and you're walking with your smartphone, so you don't leave the house without it, and you scan that QR code, and up comes a video about oak trees. Or up comes um, uh, some more information about it. And that's what our students are doing right now. And like I said, we're on a reservation, so we're embedding the Apache culture as well, and the Apache language. And the younger generation is losing their language. So on our signs, it currently says oak, and then it says the word in Apache, but not many people know how to say that. So our kids are recording their voices saying that, and then linking it to a QR code. Seriously, people 
like to put this out on a piece of paper and I get some dust, not dust tape, but packing tape we're going to put on the sign. Okay, it's no longer about the teacher, it's about that global audience. Okay, so, also, digital stories, those are really big right now. We have iMovie, again, if you're Apple, Movie Maker, but I suggest having your students do the screen place first. If you have the iPad app, Toontastic, they have an amazing resource where it walks the kids through the plot diagram up to the climax and all of that, and the resolution. And I wanted to leave you with another story. So I, I shared this earlier with these gentlemen. I had a student in my class, and he rarely talked. You know that he's got a trench coat. He is, um, has no friends. He comes to school late every day, and he rarely talks that year. A few years later, I had the opportunity to go to our summer school program and watch their presentation. And the kids did research during the summer, and then they made a digital story on um, Movie Maker. And they had a choice. They could put a soundtrack to it, or they could narrate it. This kid chose to narrate it. I thought I was listening to a professional commercial announcer or movie trailer. His voice had so much emotion and intonation. I thought he was from Hollywood. And his mother, at the end, I went to talk to her and I said, I can't believe this is the same kid. He never talked in fourth grade. And she, she teared up and she said, thank you for helping him find his voice. So I want to leave you with, literacy can be so fun, a great way to launch a STEM unit, but it's not just the reading, it could be the speaking, the viewing, and the writing as well. I was going to have you do a post, a pre and a post, have you write again about how you can embed um, literacy with STEM, but I think that I'll, I'll skip that for right now. But I did want to tell you, um, on, on the table there are some business cards. You can scan the QR code on the back to get my contact saved for you. Take a card or two for some colleagues who weren't able to be here today. Maybe some uh, neighbors or friends who weren't able to be here. Because on my blog, I have so many resources free because where I live, they don't have very many resources. So I have a lot of free resources on there, ideas of how to embed something at home, in the classroom, and teachers. Back in here at 11.30, we're going to go over how to write your own STEM lessons using the Ohio State Standards.